we had an experiment of uh, which is seldom in eco economics. We cannot do experiments, but after the Second World War, an experiment started in Germany, because in the West, uh, under the guidance of the uh, Allies, uh, Germany uh, could prosper, and what was called an economic miracle was a result of good policies. And the result of bad policies you could observe in the GDR. Uh, socialist planning uh, and suppressed all in, uh, personal initiative, um, capital misallocation, etc. Uh, the system did not work and it collapsed finally in 1989. We see uh, socialism, which has everywhere and anywhere failed in the end. Uh, but it's an idea that never dies, always fails, and uh, from failure to failure, it seems to even get more uh, sympathy. Economics matter because economic issues are a prominent aspect uh, of life of individuals and whole societies. So uh, most of our time during the working life, we are in the office or at the working place. And for society, so societies, economic welfare is an, a fundamental element. Uh, may I refer to the experience in Germany? Uh, in 1923, hyperinflation destroyed the civil society. Mm. And a few years later, mass unemployment opened the door for Hitler to come into power. We know the consequences. World War II, the, the horrible number of deaths. Uh, and Germany serves also as another example for good policies uh, because after the Second World War, under the leadership of Ludwig Erhard, the then economics minister, he removed all the regulations on prices. The currency reform happened in 48. And these two reforms opened the way uh, to the recovery of Germany from the ruins of World War II to a prospering society. Millions of refugees uh, uh, provided with jobs, and not least, this economic success stabilized the young democracy. Uh, a very good, uh, eminent uh, economic historian, friend of mine, uh, he asked the question, could democracy in Western Germany after the Second World War have uh, succeeded if it had not this economic basis? So uh, there's also a uh, political uh, dimension uh, of this uh, success. And uh, now I stop with Germany with referring to the East Germany. Uh, we had an experiment of, uh, which is seldom in eco economics, we cannot do experiments. But after the Second World War, an experiment started in Germany because in the West, uh, under the guidance of the uh, Allies, Germany uh, could prosper and what was called an economic miracle was a result of good policies. And the result of bad policies you could observe in the GDR. Uh, socialist planning uh, and suppressed all in, uh, personal initiative, um, capital misallocation, etc. Uh, the system did not work and it collapsed finally in 1989. So um, um, in Germany, the same people, the same climate, uh, economists uh, very often search for differences uh, in climate, etc., in genes or so, but here we have the same population e exposed to two uh, economic policy experiments and the result is very clear and I think the world is full uh, of this kind of experiments, good ones and bad ones. I have no sympathy whatever 
for the term engineering. <laughs> engineering is for me a category of physics, chemistry, etc. In the realm where natural laws dominate uh, experiments, etc. Nothing like this uh, is happening in economics. Uh, the behavior of people matters. Um, <clears throat> Uh, people, uh, people, society react to shocks, uh, and the outcome is very often uh, e not easily to be predicted. And uh, I dislike this term engineering uh, above all because it gives the impression that you can steer the economy like steering a machine, uh, pulling a, a trigger here and there, and then you have the result. Uh, I think what we call uh, called um, it's, it's out of fashion um, hydraulic Keynesianism uh, is an example of this, this thinking of engineering. Uh, uh, there is a, a box that was developed by um, and, uh, Keynesian, uh, which showed if you a big machinery when you put uh, when you filled additional water, then it distributed according to constant parameters. And finally, prices got up or down, whatever you did. Uh, I think uh, it would be very misleading, would be a misguided policy to rely on this notion uh, of engineering, of a mechanical reaction of the economy. E economics is much closer to biology, to psychology. And, um, but we need a theoretical basis uh, for guiding economic policy, giving advice to politicians. If I may, can I make a quote of John Maynard Keynes? Do you mind? <laughs> Don't mind at all. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, when I talk about these things, this very often comes to my mind. It's from the channel theory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's toward the end. The ideas of economists and political philosophers, both when they are right, and when they are wrong, are more powerful than is commonly understood. Indeed, the world is ruled by little else, practically men who believe themselves to be quite exempt from any intellectual influence are usually the slaves of some defunct economist, met men in authority. We have examples for that. Yeah. <laughs> met, men, <laughs> met men in... Um, in uh, authority, who hear voices in the air are distilling their frenzy from some academic scribbler of a few years back. I'm sure that the power of vested interest is vastly exaggerated compared with the gradual encroachment of ideas. I think this is, uh, so to say, my understanding that you need sound economic policies uh, to give advice and uh, to apply appropriate economic policy. Uh, I think I've more or less already answered this question, mm. uh, but um, it comes to my mind uh, when I was still at university before joining the Deutsche Bundesbank and the European Central Bank, when I had from time to time give the introductory course to economics and to motivate my students, I read the preface of a book uh, by Heilbronner. I forgot the title. I think it's about uh, economists or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he uh, explains that uh, when we um, read history, it's generals, it's politicians who are the dominant figures. But he said, my main heroes, the real heroes, are the economists. Uh, it's uh, Adam Smith, it's Karl Marx, it's John Maynard Keynes. Uh, they had a much bigger influence uh, on societies. So having read that, I said to my students, uh, study carefully economics uh, uh, to have a good influence uh, on our societies in the future. And uh, we have positive, we have negative uh, examples. Uh, is, it, is it allowed to tell a joke? Oh, of course. It's encouraged. <laughs> uh, it comes uh, just suddenly to, to my mind. 
uh, there was a villager parade on the red place in Moscow. And after many missiles, tanks, cannons, uh, a lot of military had passed. At the end of this long line, there were five main insignificant, seemingly in, insignificant men in gray coats. And Brezhnev asked, what are these people here? And he said, oh, they are economists. Uh, I tell you, they can do a lot of harm. I think with the ongoing uh, specialization, uh, many economists uh, have worked on detailed, uh, complex models, uh, presenting new forms, at, at, at making small additions to a already complex story. Mm. Uh, and in this way, I think economics for the time have uh, somewhat neglected the big issues uh, they should deal with. Uh, you mentioned some of them, climate change, uh, even even distribution. Uh, remember when Queen Elizabeth visited the London School of Economics uh, yeah. at the occasion, I think it was the 100th birthday, mm. uh, she asked the prominent economists uh, waiting for her, uh, why didn't you see it coming? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, it's true there were some financial analysts uh, who had predicted um, disaster, mm. but the majority of economists was rather relaxed, was rather relaxed. And uh, I think uh, on the pandemic, um, I'm not familiar, in, uh, especially familiar in this field. Uh, certainly there have been some remote uh, uh, work, uh, economists working on that. Uh, but uh, this was a sudden challenge, a sudden shock. And I think uh, immediately after the shock, like for vaccines, mm. uh, economists have started uh, to deal with that. And on climate change, I think we have now a whole discipline of uh, climate uh, economics, uh, which presents uh, many ideas, probably even answers on the economic side uh, of, of climate change. I think what we need, um, and this is, I think, badly needed, we need all this specialization, uh, highly sophisticated models, etc. This is the academic progress, uh, for good or bad. Uh, this is the development by which young economists qualify for, uh, for chairs. Uh, but we also need encompassing uh, studies like, uh, like um, was presented uh, my, my God, uh, this famous book by, we, sh we, sh we should go back to um, where the economic started, uh, mm. Smith's uh, Wealth of Nations. This well, was an in encompassing Achimoglu. Uh, right, uh, yeah. Just a name uh, for the moment um, escaped my, <clears throat> my knowledge. Uh, so uh, this is an approach. I think we need a lot of that. And uh, we should go back more and uh, much more to uh, the time of uh, the approach of Adam Smith, Ricardo. Mm. Economics started as a political economic pol pol political science. So in this incompat I think we need both. We need specialization, but we need also this um, um, this examination of the whole picture of society and economics. Question, what do you mean by accountability? Politicians are finally accountable to their voters, bureaucrats uh, to the rules and might finally end uh, at court. Uh, no such kind of accountability for economists. Uh, uh, I think they have a moral obligation. If they give economic advice, they should do it on their best knowledge, having studied uh, the issue carefully. And above all, above all, regarding the limits of our knowledge uh, and showing a high degree of humility. 
I think uh, this is the moral obligation, uh, moral accountability uh, of uh, economists, especially when they uh, are trying to give advice uh, to improve politics. Uh, and on the side of uh, politics, I think uh, politicians uh, are accountable uh, to decide uh, who are the economists they should trust. Hmm. I think very often uh, they choose the economists who uh, uh, support uh, their pre uh, prejudices. Right. Uh, so uh, is then the economist who are, is doing this job accountable or is the uh, politician accountable? I think both, uh, both. Uh, but the problem is um, when I, uh, uh, just to my mind, when uh, I had arrived at the ECB and uh, President Deutenberg uh, mandated me with designing a strategy I called together a small group of, group of uh, young economists mm -hmm. and it was a late Monday evening. We were a bit tired and we talked about a new strategy, etc. And I looked around, um, all young faces around me. So I said, um, it's, for me, it's like in a uh, university seminar. We are searching for a solution for a problem uh, which is totally new, introduction of a new currency for a multinational uh, economic area. Uh, but two things are different. Uh, the first is we have to come to an end. We cannot say in December, wait, with the introduction of Euro, we have not yet finished our work. And now comes the point of accountability. And I said to my young uh, economists, be aware what we design, of course, the council Governing Council had to adopt, but I was sure I would get through with my proposal. Uh, be aware what we design will have an influence on the life of 300 million people. And I saw in the eyes of this young economist, they were uh, intellectually interested in uh, solving a problem. But this kind of responsibility, they were not used. Because in academia, you write a paper, if you fail, you write a new one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um, this is totally different uh, when you should be aware that uh, what you do, what you design, what you apply in politics has a consequence for the life of people, of many, many people. I always avoid the term capitalism. Ah. <laughs> You would expect why. The term capitalism uh, is immediately connected to exploitation of workers, greedy owners of capital, violating laws, influencing lawmakers uh, uh, to follow their interests. Uh, all that has happened and it's true. Uh, however, capitalism, even in this uh, root form, has uh, provided substantial economic progress. And there is, by the way, no uh, more, uh, more convincing explanation of this uh, success of capitalism than by Karl Marx in the, uh, in the Communist Manifesto. This is the praise of capitalism uh, on the economic success, which is hardly to, uh, <clears throat> uh, to uh, outperform. Uh, for me, when I talk about uh, what is implicit uh, in this question, by the way, in, in, in criticizing capitalism, you can observe, and I'm sure, I, uh, I haven't read it, but I'm sure in your many interviews, there were a number of uh, socialist thinkers who talk about capitalism and uh, implicitly or explicitly also denounce the market economy uh, market economy uh, with uh, private capital, etc. So this is connected and it's sometimes a tactic, sometimes it's, uh, so to say, going uh, more or less uh, unintended. Um, I would answer, uh, we need a, an economy which is based on market economy uh, and I would one could call that capitalism if one would 
mean it in this sense, but capitalism is Burns, I would say. Right. It's a description of Manchester capitalism and children have to work 12 hours uh, every, uh, every day per week. So uh, this is the reason why I, I avoid the term capitalism. Hmm. When we talk about uh, economies of our time. Eh? Right. Well, that, that's very sensible. Uh, our next question is a bit about this, um, but no human system today has been able to endure. What about global capitalism? Can it survive in its current form? Um, with your definitional issue ex accepted, do you want to have a go at that question? There is a saying in Germany, only death is certain, nothing is certain in history. So when Fukuyama, after the fall of the Iron Curtain, explained the end of history, meaning that uh, democracy and market economy uh, had succeeded and uh, now the whole world will embrace this uh, system. Uh, in the same moment when I read this title, I was convinced he's wrong. Uh, and for me, it was easy to have this impression, not only it's after 20 years or 30 years, uh, because having read Karl Popper, mm. uh, he explained that there is no determinism in, in, in history. He criticized Marxism not least because here the development of history is determined uh, by economic developments. Mm. History is an open, open process. And Popper also uh, mentioned uh, that life from the beginning Societies from the beginning are searching for better solutions. Uh, I'm afraid uh, we will experience many detours in the search for better solutions, ups and downs, uh, but uh, history is a never ending process. Again, uh, we never know, uh, also in economics, uh, in reality, what develops. But for the time being, I think the combination of a democratic system with markets uh, based on competition, with the rule of law, taking care of those in society who are unable to care for themselves. I think this combination is, for me, the best uh, system I can think of. Mm. But such a system is always challenged uh, by shocks. Take the pandemic, which has hit uh, the poorer part of the society uh, mostly, but independent of uh, the economic and political system. Uh, but in uh, democracy, I think the critique is louder, it's open. Uh, the system is always challenged by interest, group, uh, interest groups. Menzo Olsen has explained that uh, after wars, etc., uh, with, um, with freedom uh, and uh, democracy, um, interest groups try to uh, embark on uh, on their uh, on their. Uh, uh, privileges, etc. Uh, so we need from time to time, we need reforms, because we would not wish uh, a war uh, to start a new experience when uh, it is necessary to take reforms. Uh, but uh, market economies and democracies are also uh, under threat from their own success. Uh, Josef Schumpeter, Schumpeter has explained that uh, what he called capitalism, uh, I use his, his term now, capitalism and socialism was the title of this book, uh, is under threat from its own success uh, because uh, the intellectuals, the elites uh, in the culture, in the media, etc., uh, are on, in a majority always against market uh, economies. So losing this support, uh, having to uh, live with this uh, attack uh, from the side of the elites. Uh, I think um, this system is always uh, challenged. Um, uh, the more it is successful, the more it is successful. 
So, um, uh, but I think uh, the superiority of this combination is shown uh, everywhere, anywhere, uh, anytime in, in the world. Uh, we see uh, socialism, which has everywhere and anywhere failed in the end. Uh, but it's an idea that never dies, always fails. And uh, from failure to failure, it seems to even get more uh, sympathy. Uh, so uh, I think we have now uh, obvious competition on a global scale uh, with China challenging, challenging the Western model. Uh, and whereas uh, Fukuyama and others, many had hoped that with rising economic welfare for middle class and uh, the majority of people, uh, the, <clears throat> the desire for a democratic system uh, would bring China to closer to Western societies. Uh, we see um, this uh, hope uh, does not materialize because the Communist Party doesn't want to lose grip on the society. Uh, so this experiment, uh, I think, uh, for which the West should have been prepared, uh, will end uh, in, in, in the longer term, I'm convinced, with uh, lower growth, uh, lower innovation, uh, major, major power in, in China. But uh, this story is just going on. Um, the world is uh, again involved in uh, heavy uh, <clears throat> competition for the best system. Again, history never ends.